Imagine the might of a thousand men thirsting a glimmering spear flaming with the fury of the stars, held by a mortal that was once a divine aspect, the aspect of war itself. The unworthy body of what was once Aegis, now the aspect of Pantheon, roams the realm of Taragon to destroy the dark. A shadow of demonic wings brings terror called Aatrox, ender of war. Killer of gods may have destroyed Pantheon in what follows our story, but it is a lesson that we must remember that a man's will, a mortal's will, may never die. Not even if put in the depths of death's arms, his unbreakable spear breaks death itself. Our story begins with a young warrior trader called Atrix, born to a modest tribe of warriors where hostile fumes were surrounding the earth. He was named after a star in the myths of war called the Pantheon. From a young age, he knew he was born to battle. Though not the strongest nor the weakest of his tribe, he never gave up on trying to beat his fellow brothers in mock battles. During these events, though bruised with cuts and marks, spitting blood every day after another, never gave up on himself. A fellow young recruit called Tylus was his rival at combat, but great brother emerged from each wound and scar. They have traded in each practice. Pylas was really amazed by his unrelenting endurance. A true warrior's will. After completing their training, they joined the Rakor ranks. One day, trespassers, which were barbarians, have encountered their patrol while on duty. Though what was left of their patrol was dead by the attack, they both emerged alive. They blamed the aspect of the sun because it refused to destroy those trespassers. So on that day, they both swore to capture the power by climbing the glorious Mount of Taragon. As all selfish warriors, they fear no danger. They underestimate the dangers of ascending to the peak of Mount Taragon. Pylas was a sacrifice to that journey. He dealt his last breath right before reaching the summit. After the skies went clear, Atreus emerged on the peak of Mount Taragon. He has captured the power of a divine aspect. That day, he returned to his ranks, the Rackers, but he was not a man, he was the aspect of war itself. Pantheon, holding a spear and shield, glimmering with crystal might, he was judged unworthy by the aspect, so he took control of his body to seek its own revenge as a task, a task that was considered too great for mortal men like Atreus. Cast aside in the depths of his mind, Atreus was left in fading visions of the aspect controlling his body, continually seeking the dark, living weapons created in a bygone age. Eventually, the Pantheon was led to a battle at the mounts near Taragon with the demonic Tarkin, Aatrox, the killer of gods, and the aspect of war itself. Their fight raged into the skies and swept through the armies beneath them, until the impossible occurred. The blade of the Darken has pierced the chest of Pantheon, a blow that tore the aspect of war from the heavens. But as the aspect faded away from our mighty warrior's body, Aatrox awoke with a blade in his chest, the spear and shield of the Pantheon still in his hand. With the light that was once upon him dimming, he took his breath, covered in blood, and spit on Atreus's face. Atreus sneered and left him to die. Hours later, after the crowd descended from afar, Atreus painfully stood up, going back to his ranks with a trail of blood. After a lifetime of defeat, his will to live and his anger at the trail was enough to scare off the death that has claimed the aspect of war itself. Atreus recovered in the house of his fellow brother of arms, Pylos on the hands of his widow, Lula, which took care of his wounds and nursing. While he was recovering, he realized during each day that passed, he had spent all his life looking to the stars, never considering what was beneath. Unlike gods, mortals fought because they must, knowing that death lay in wait. It was a resilience he saw in all life, the threats unending. Troubles emerged from the Northern Record settlements, reports of barbarian invaders threatening them, and also Lula's far. Atreus to the unfetching with might. Even though it was months before he could carry a spear, he picked up what was left of the Pantheon's kit, his spear and shield, and took off to end this scourge once and for all. Yet when he arrived, he found his sworn enemies already under siege. He knew from their cries, from the overwhelming stench of blood, that they faced Aatrox. He then understood what happened. Aatrox was the one who led the barbarians to his homelands. Though he considered them as his enemies, they were like the Rakos, mortals that had suffered from the conflict between greater powers. Aetius felt a cold rage at both the aspects and the dark. They were not different, they were both the problem. Aetius stood in front of the Darken on that day. The Darken recognized the spear and battered shield of what was once the aspect he has destroyed, and then mocked him. What can Aetius do without the power of the aspect? If itself has been defeated by the Darken, what hope he has? Aatrox's blows may have put Atreus to his knees, but his own will reignited the aspect's spear 
once again, a mortal's will and upon hearing the cries of a thousand warriors surrounding him with a mighty leap to the skies, he struck a blow that shattered the Darkened's sword. Both the blade and the Darkened fell to the ground. Only Atreus stood still that day. His name reborn the stars and heavens above him once again. From battle he was reborn anew. Atreus vowed that day to stand against aspects, ascendant, demons, darkness, all that means great power, that which can only destroy. Forgetting his own name, he is now the new pantheon, the aspect's weapon, fueled by the will and might of a mortal to fight. For the divine pantheon gone, war must be reborn in a man. I fight. Until the blood takes the spear from my grasp. Until I can only crawl. And even then, you will not defeat me. Even then, I will spit in your face. <laughs>